Hi guys, Pete, N6QW, and uh, this transceiver that you're looking at is a, uh, is a product of a design from uh, Wes Hayward, W7ZOI, in the December 89, uh, January 90 uh, QST, he featured a uh, 20 meter QRP single sideband transceiver. It actually is a trans receiver. It, it actually is a, a separate transmitter, separate receiver, but does have a, a common VFO and common BFO. Um, this uses an analog, an analog VFO, believe it or not, and uh, it has another feature uh, with a digital display here. It features the EI9GQ uh, Huff and Puff uh, VFO stabilizer. So uh, even though um, it is an analog, you can make this thing rock solid. I've, I've implemented quite a few VFO stabilizers, and uh, this is probably one of the best. Uh, I had to add some additional functionality in here, and you can see the frequency starting to drift a little bit. And uh, W4, you're 5 9 to Oscar 31. Now go ahead. There we go. We've got the stabilizer on there now. Um, this is Pete N6QW. One of the things that's um, in interesting about the uh, VFO stabilizer, it continuously measures the frequency and provides a correction uh, depending on the drift. So it says 14.2355. Actually, it's off by about uh, 500, uh, 500 hertz. Um, the uh, basic uh, design uh, is from Wes, although I added a few features. It actually has two separate crystal filters, one on the transmit side, one on the receive side, and his design actually had three because the third filter was used in the speech processor. I didn't build the speech processor, but this thing uh, has an IRF 510 in it, puts out uh, water too, and uh, I have a small solid state uh, amp and then uh, SB200, so I can get 500 watts out of this thing pretty easy. A one band only on 20 meters, and if you look here, it's 14, 2, 3, 5, uh, 3, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, and it's not moving. And that little thing, uh, that carrot moving back and forth, talks about how much it's, uh, it's always uh, monitoring and changing so that the, the frequency is locked on. Um, it's kind of interesting, the, uh, the VFO uh, enclosure uh, was something that I originally used in my LM373 a transceiver that you can see on my website that's the second build of that the first build was in in the uh, 19 uh, 1970 time frame and it th this this enclosure here which is one quarter inch aluminum plate uh, was used uh, with that rig so uh, pretty heavy duty and uh, we uh, we liked it uh, very very much it was a really good uh, really good rig for us um, we use this on the air, and then I built actually a second version of this, which is much smaller. And just recently here, I've uh, I've taken to cannibalizing that rig. Although I think uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild that uh, second version of this, so that uh, what I can do then is uh, add the SI5351 to it and make some other changes. But uh, the AGC in this uh, actually Wes and I. Uh, corresponded back and forth and he provided me the design and this is uh, this was at the time he was working on the high cast and so uh, I made a few modifications and uh, it's pretty fast attack and slow uh, decay turn the uh, has a separate RF gain control. To take the VFO stabilizer off, stabilizer off just hit that button and, and you'll see the frequency starting to drift. Uh, this is not to my liking. You have no step control. This is just a analog VFO and we're sampling the output and reading the frequency. Although it does account for the IF. Uh, 
I have it working on a two element beam. Cop. See the frequency moving? Cure out to 200 watts. There you go. Forget that QRP crap. AGC is off. Pete here, N6QW, W7ZOI rig, December 89, January 90 QST. Something else I fixed, uh, West didn't have automatic break in uh, or semi break, so that you had to turn the rig in, uh, turn the rig, uh, hold the push to talk button and key it. And I made some changes in here so that you just key it and it'll work on CW. Um, this is probably, it, it works fine on CW. It's just you've got a sideband filter in there and the th signals are a little wide. So uh, you probably want something else. This, again, this has uh, got a KVG filter, uh, uh, two KG, KVG filters in here. This is one of the uh, last two. One is an eight pole and one is the, uh, was the five pole, I think. So uh, anyway, this is Pete. I built this uh, long about uh, 1998, uh, 1999, somewhere in that time frame. And uh, it was uh, shortly after I got introduced to PIC uh, microcontrollers. This has a 16F84 in it, and that's what's doing the huff and puff work. So uh, I'll do more little... Uh, Uh oh, missionary radio. I was a little pitch, but that's okay. We can I think that's the Collins net. Get the processor off, man. Awful. That's why not to use an analog VFO. Real crap, man. Never go back. Oh wow, you sounded 
Hundred, uh, Q5 at about S5. Uh, the name and what ring you're running over? Be there and six QW. Uh, what do you think the West Hayward W7ZOI transceiver. Built this in about 1998-1999, so this is almost almost 20 years old. Pete here and 6 kw wow, This radio doesn't have the same, uh, what do I say? Um, so if you have an antenna hooked to antenna 1, all right, and then you can take the RX out, and that samples, that takes that same signal that's coming in on our antenna 1, and it sends it out. Right, it's on all these, it's all a little bit different on all of them, but on the 5,000, I could take the RX out and then I run that into the TR switch, I run that into the ice front end saver, I run that into the band pad. I don't transmit through our band pad filters. I don't need the I don't need the extra thirty D B of isolation or whatever, but you know, just to receive isolation. Pete here, N six QW. Yeah, so and then the I West Hayward W seven Z O Y Q R P transceiver, December eighty nine, January ninety. Let you see. That's the rig. This is the receiver part, VFO. This is the uh, VFO. This is the BFO over here. This is a uh, first transmit stage. It has. This is the uh, balance modulator mic mic amp. It's got an MC1496. This is what I put in so you can do break in, semi break in. This is a uh, separate AGC circuit. The RF amplifier stage is uh, right down there, bandpass filter, RF amplifier, and the uh, IR510 is in the back. This is the, uh, uh, this is the bandpass filter on the transmit side. Uh, Wes put a really bulletproof uh, stage in there. There's actually a separate crystal right here for CW so that you uh, pump a uh, CW signal through uh, uh, at the uh, at the IF frequency yeah, right through there, so that uh, you're not uh, you're you're actually producing yeah, real CW. Just, just safe, this is know, the um, EI9GQ um, BFO stabilizer. Heat here N6QW. This is the West West Hayward transceiver that appeared in the December '89. Uh, January 90. You notice what the stabilizers really hold that frequency tight. It's not moving. I'll take that off and we'll see how much it drifts. 